Hi, it's Alyssa here, and I'm going to tell you how you can not only survive a long haul flight, but step off the plane feeling refreshed and ready to roll. So there are five key categories that you need to address to make sure that your flight is as comfortable as possible. One is clothing, two is food, three is movement, four is creature comforts, and five is hygiene. Starting with clothing. Now, of course you wanna be comfortable when you fly. That does not mean you have to wear pajama pants. Please, people, just put yourself together a little bit. You can find stylish, comfortable, cute clothing without looking like you just rolled out of bed. This is the exact outfit I wore on my 27 hour flight and I will tell you why it's the ideal outfit. So first I have layering. I can take this off, I have a tank top underneath. Usually you're kind of hot when you get on the plane and you're putting everything away, moving around and as soon as the flight starts going they blast that air and it gets really cold. So it's good to have a piece that you can easily take on and off. You can roll up the sleeves or pull them down. Number two are these pants. They're stretchy, they're comfortable. I'll show you the waistband. I have room to move. And when you wear tight pants, they can dig into your waistline and that can cause bloat. And most people already get bloated just from flying and so you don't want your pants digging into you increasing that bloat and discomfort. A nice wool sock. Love, love, love my REI wool socks. They keep my feet warm. When your feet are cold, then the rest of your body tends to get cold really fast. So those are just easy to throw in your bag and then slip on at the beginning of the flight. For footwear, you want a nice slide on and off pair. I wore these ones. Um, that way, when you're going through security and when you get on the plane, you can slip them on and off really easily. Lastly, a good scarf is an essential. I love this one. I got it at Nordstrom Rack. It's thin, it's lightweight, it's cute. It can keep my neck warm. I can spread it out like a blanket around me. And then my favorite thing to do with it is I don't like to put my head on the headrest because it's kind of dirty if you know what I mean. Everybody else's heads are rolling around there. So I just slip this on and then I can sleep peacefully knowing that my head isn't touching where thousands of other people's heads have been laying. If you're sitting next to the bathroom or somebody's smelly, you can wrap it around your nose like, the, ugh, like that, which I've done many times. Number two, food. You need to consider this at least a day before no spicy food for indigestion, no beans, no broccoli or cabbage that'll cause you to be bloated. And don't go too crazy with heavy carbs. The airplane food is pretty much all carbs and so you don't wanna already get on the plane feeling heavy and then feeling even more heavy from sitting there and eating all that carb heavy plane food. Even though I just am sitting on the plane, I, for some reason, I'm always ravenous. So it's always a good idea to keep snacks that you can eat for in between meals. I like to keep a salty snack with me, usually mixed nuts. They're healthy, they're filling, they're good. And then I always have to have a sweet treat, my little cookie bag. The last thing for food, it's not really food, but water, you need to be hydrated, hydrated, hydrated. I found this to be the biggest difference in the way I feel when I land is when I get enough to drink. So I usually start with two liters before the flight and then one to two liters on the flight. The best way to get all that water in is to either bring your own big water bottle or get the biggest size one at one of those stores once you've gone through security. And then you can just ask a flight attendant to fill the bottle for you. And that way you don't have to wait for the drink cart to go by every time you want a drink. I don't even want to tell you the technique I used to use to avoid plain bathrooms because I thought they were disgusting and 
kind of scary. I didn't use one until I was 28. Don't tell no one. Don't worry, it didn't involve an adult diaper, but but it was not healthy for me or my kidneys. <laughs> Number three, movement. This is something you will wanna do before your flight and during your flight. You're gonna be sitting for a long time, so it's really important that you get your body moving and stretching before your flight. Uh, if you have time before the flight, like the day of, do I like yoga because it helps loosen me up and strengthen me, but any kind of movement will do. Um, I've done a HIIT workout before flights. If your flight is really early in the morning, then exercise the night before. And then when you're on your flight, there's usually in the back of the plane, there's like an open area where you can stand. Um, I like to do forward folds, like ragdoll, that'll help loosen my back. I put my foot up against the wall to stretch my calf. I do torso twists, uh, you know, just basic stretching. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just to get your body moving. At your chair, you can pump your legs up and down, rotate your ankles, just kind of help that blood keep flowing and keep your feet loosened up. The seats are really not that comfortable on flights and so it just makes your body so stiff and tight when you're in your little position in the chair. It's, it really takes a toll on your body. So keep it moving, keep it flowing, and you won't be walking off the plane stiff as a board. Number four. What is number four? Four creature comforts, neck pillow. This, I don't even think I need to explain this. Uh, you don't want your head bobbling around on the flight. Those pillows they give you on the plane are useless. So this just snuggles around your head, keeps you comfortable, and it's easy enough to just clip on your bag so you, it's not taking up a ton of space. Another pillow that I love to travel with, and I think this is one of my best, cheapest investments, is a lumbar pillow, and it's good for road trips too. So this just slips into my personal bag, like my purse, and then you just unroll it, fill it up, and then tuck it behind your back and it's so easy to carry around and it makes a huge difference with comfort. Headphones, duh. You don't wanna just be sitting there the whole flight listening to the loud engine, so bring your headphones. They usually provide you with them on the plane, but they don't look very comfortable. So bring your own. Um, if you're really fancy, you can have those nice noise canceling ones. I just take my iPhone headphones. Eye mask. This is up there with drinking enough water as far as tips go for me. This blocks out the light. Even when they dim the lights on the plane, it's still pretty bright in there. It helps prevent dry eyes um, with all that air blasting on you. It doesn't have to be a fancy one. Uh, this is my Emirates mask, but I love at Walmart of all places, they have this little $3 eye mask that I think is the best one. And I've tried many masks. My Walmart one fell on the plane floor on my last flight, so I had to throw it away. A sleep aid, I use Benadryl. I usually take two Benadryl or sometimes two Dramamine. Helps knock me out and it helps if I get an emotion sickness, which I usually don't, but whatever, it's precautionary. Um, you can do over-the-counter, natural, prescription, whatever will help you sleep on the flight. Now, there is a fine line between knocking you out and like putting you in a coma. Some of the heavier sleep aids will make you feel really groggy when you wake up and you don't want that. You wanna wake up feeling refreshed like you had a good sleep, not like you're taking four hours to get yourself fully awake again. Number five is hygiene. Now this one is super important because you're in close quarters with people, they're recirculating the air, it's really dry air. 
Uh, I don't know about you guys, but every flight I've been on, there's always somebody hacking and coughing or sometimes multiple people doing it. So it's really easy to get sick on a flight. The first thing you wanna do when you get to your seat is pull out your disinfecting wipes. You should never travel without these. They're great at hotels, everything, and especially on airplanes. Wipe down your tray table, which is dirtier than the toilet on the airplane, sick. Wipe down the armrests, your belt buckle, the window shade, the entertainment unit, remote control, Anything you'll be touching, wipe it down, get it over with, then you won't have to worry about it the rest of the flight. Get your hand wipes out and wipe your hands. If you're touching your face or touching food, you wanna make sure that your hands are nice and clean. Another thing people don't really think about when they are flying with hygiene and stuff is moisturizing. So your hands and your nose and your mouth, if they get cracks in them from the dry air, that is a very easy entrance way for germs to get in. So chapstick, eye drops, and then this we learned from a pharmacist. He said to take the Neosporin and rub it on the inside of your nose and that way it'll keep it moist and help prevent things from getting in, yuck. And then the last thing for hygiene is during your layover or if you don't have a layover during the flight, go to the bathroom, floss your teeth, brush your teeth, wash your face, change your underwear. It sounds kind of silly like, oh, why bother? Like I'm just gonna be getting dirty again on the flight, but Trust me, it makes you feel like a whole new person to be fresh and clean again. Those are the five categories you need to consider. I know they will make a big difference for you because they have for me. And if you like this video, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to see more fun and useful videos. Bye.